Hi, and welcome to Learn Rosin Now. Today we're going to be taking a look at the C Sharp Syntax Rewriter class and how we can use it to rewrite source code. Um, I've got a little sample project opened up here already. Uh, I've included the Microsoft.code analysis package from NuGet, and we've got um, this, this little sample tree. What we're going to do is we're going to create a rewriter that just takes if statements like this and rewrites them to have curly braces around their body so we don't have um, this, this dangling statement like we do here. So we'll jump into it and it's very similar to uh, the class we looked at in our last video, the C-sharp syntax walker, where you inherit from C-sharp syntax rewriter in this case and it does a depth first traversal of the nodes. Um, and much like the walker we have the choice to override uh, different nodes that we choose to visit. So you've got a massive list of all of the different kinds of C-sharp syntax here to choose from. And since we're interested in if statements, we're going to go ahead and uh, visit if statement. So we'll, we'll get our code just running up here and we'll start to look at, at what we can do with this rewriter right out of the box. So we'll make our new rewriter. Rewriter is equal to new my rewriter. And then what you do here is um, you pass in a node that you'd like to visit at, as sort of the, the starting point to kick things off. In our case, we're just going to pass in the root node, so it will have all of the, the syntax here. But if we wanted to only visit methods, you know, we could filter out methods and only visit those um, and, and do something like that. Maybe you're doing that for performance reasons or something like that. This stuff is all really fast, so I, I can't imagine that you would really need to do anything other than visit, start visiting at the node. Um, so right now our, our rewriter doesn't do anything interesting, it just gives us the same tree back that we put into it. But what we can start to do is we can start to manipulate things here. So we've got essentially three options for ways we can, we can change and rewrite these trees. We can just return null, in which case it will remove every if statement that our rewriter encounters and we'll see that, yeah, in fact, we're now just missing that. Um, we can return, you know, the exact same node that came into it. We'll see no different. It's the same tree that came out. Um, you might be wondering how is returning the node different from visiting, uh, you know, forcing this base class to visit? Um, if you don't call base.visit if statement, it won't visit the internal nodes um, that are children of your if statement. So if you say you only want to visit if statements and no deeper, that's fine. Uh, you can just return the node. If you want to continue traversing deeper into your tree, you'll want to uh, call this base statement. So we, we can also do one final thing to these nodes and we can just return entirely new syntax trees or syntax nodes and, and replace them in our tree. And that's what we'll do here. So we'll start by uh, getting the body of our tree and we'll just continue execution down here. Var body is equal to node.statement. So this is our console.write line. Um, it was true. And now we want to um, create an if statement with a block and pass that back. So we'll do block is equal to, and we'll use the, the syntax factory to build a new, a new piece of C sharp syntax. And we'll pass in, we just have one statement in this case, and it's our body. And this should create a little block for us. And we can see it has the curly braces around it. And then finally, we can do var new if statement is equal to, um, we want to do no dot with statement. No dot. So actually, yeah, no dot with statement. There it is. And we pass in our block here. We don't need to visit our children. Um, and we'll return that new if statement. So we'll just double check our new if statement looks correct. And we can just jump back up here and double check that everything came out correctly. Uh, it's not formatted very nicely, but you can see there are, in fact, uh, curly braces around our console.write line. Um, and you could use the formatter class if you wanted to you know, clean things up when you're printing this out somewhere. So if you watched the first or second video of this series, you might have noticed that we were manipulating trees sort of um, at a, in a different way, not with this rewriter originally. And I think um, it's, it's really important to look at the differences between the different ways you can change trees and where different approaches um, sort of excel and where other ones sort of fall down a little bit. So let's, um, 
let's just comment out our stuff here. I will leave that root actually, but we'll, let's comment this stuff out and let's look at the way you might um, you might manipulate this directly. So let's just get our if statement var if statement. Actually, let's get all of them. Pretending there there could be multiple in this tree. Root dot descendant nodes dot of type if statement, and then we wanted you know for each var if statement in if statements we want to um, essentially do the exact same thing we were doing before down here we want to get the body of our if statement I'll just call it if statement instead and we want to manipulate it exactly the same way so instead of returning here what we're going to do is we're going to go root is equal to uh, root dot replace node so we can replace our old if statement with our new if statement and then var result just to, to view this really quickly at the end we can see um, what happened here so you can see that you know we got the same output we've replaced our if statement and you might be wondering you know well if you can do it this way then why on earth would you create an entire separate type and class um, and, and do it that way. And, and if, admittedly, like when I started learning this stuff, I had that question too. Um, and where the C-sharp syntax rewriter really starts to pay off is when you're making multiple changes to a tree. Um, immutability in Roslyn is a huge blessing when you're, you know, able to trust that no one's going to change this object under your feet, but it also makes it sort of difficult to change these trees. And you'll see that like if we, you know, add another if statement here, We'll change this one so we can tell the difference between them. If false, and just put a different message. How how do we get here? Um, so you'll notice that now this approach that we've got here, uh, we've got two options to you know the first if statement and the second if statement. We can see how um, each one of them was processed. Uh, the final result that comes out only has those braces around our first if statement and this is a huge point and a very important point to, to make you know to understand why this is happening why is only our first if statement getting our braces um, we're clearly going through our if statement for both you can even see we've got our if false we've got the block that we're creating with the the, the correct syntax here and we've generated a new state statement but the problem is here where we do root equals root dot replace node um, and we're replacing this if statement, something is not working here. And our, our if false is not properly you know, getting its braces like it should. And you might be wondering, why is this happening? And a, a lot of people new to Roslyn run into this all the time. Um, the issue is immutability. So the first time we pass through this for loop here, we're overwriting this root and we're replacing a node. And in fact, we're getting an entirely new syntax tree out of this. Now the second time when we come through here, uh, we're trying to replace an if statement that existed in our previous tree, um, and we're trying to replace that if statement in the new tree. And um, you know, Roslyn goes through the tree, it can't find this node because it belongs to a completely different tree, and it essentially gives up. It doesn't throw an exception or anything. Um, it just says, you know, I can't find it, therefore there's nothing to replace. Uh, here's your original tree. And that's why we're getting only the first instance um, rewritten correctly. Now, you can contrast this with our, our rewriter that we were looking at earlier, and we can pass in the exact same stuff. And you'll notice that our rewriter handles this case just fine. And the reason for this is internal to this C-sharp syntax rewriter, since it's doing sort of a depth first visit, um, it can build these trees up from the bottom and it can glue them together. So um, it takes care of all of that sort of scaffolding code for you and it makes it really easy to apply sort of a batch of changes to um, a given syntax tree. There's a few different classes and we'll explore them later in the in the series such as the document editor and syntax annotations that also allow you to achieve this. But this is just a, a very big thing to be aware of when you're when you're looking at these trees. So I think that's um, about all I wanted to talk about um, the, the C sharp syntax rewriter. It's a, it's a really powerful class when you're trying to manipulate uh, syntax. Um, we use it all the time uh, to build you know, developer tools to rewrite code. Um, and, and it's probably one of my favorite classes just because you know you get such 
concise little you know pieces of code you don't have to do the scaffolding and and it just works for you it takes care of all those immutability problems that you might otherwise have so thanks for watching uh, i'll try and get back on a weekly schedule here and hopefully we'll have a video out uh, for you guys next week thanks a lot